dressing room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Cook. Vic is in that state of pleasant suspension which follows a substantial meal and is somewhat limp in consequence. Sage, who joined him only a few moments ago after her nightly bout with the dinner dishes, seems to have a wifely edge. She's been gazing at her spouse some little time with that speculative hostility familiar to the most devoted of couples. And now she says... They just can't leave you alone, can they? You leave no doubt to introduce me to my love? I sure do. Hey, don't worry. Such a greedy, grasping bunch of fellas I never heard. Your references to the executives of the circuit fires of the Milky Way? My references to them men there in Chicago. They never let a week go by, but what they don't try to sell you some crazy thing. The wonder they don't try to sell you the clubhouse. This discussion will get us nowhere, Sadie. I suggest we get it. You gonna buy that policeman's outfit to advertise? Been looking through this cat man, huh? Oh, sure. I believe it was addressed to me. Silly cunt, star and handcuffs. They got the same identical set down at Gamilton's, only it's for children and price 50 cents. In your book up there, I noticed they want $2 and a half for their policeman's outfit. I'm not particularly interested in continuing this pointless conversation. But I'd like to say that you are laboring under a foolish delusion. The article advertised in this catalog is not a policeman's outfit. It is too. Silly cop star and handcuff. Very well, Sadie. Keep yourself. Every single week, some darn thing. Sadness, robes, plumed hats, diplomas, ribbons, tassels. Goodness. You'd try your loose in your last penny if you had a chance. You can't stand an argument with me, Dr. Speech. I saw an advertising in there where they'll tattoo you for $14. Why wouldn't that be nice? Draw $14 on the bank, go to Chicago, and get yourself tattooed. You studied this last literature very carefully, I guess. Yes, I did. I wanted to see what new ridiculous trash and Chicago fellas had thought up. Sadie, I will tell you an improving little story. Oh, Father. Sadie, I will tell you an improving little story. No, Father. I feel it my duty to tell you an improving little study. Please, I got something in my teeth. One of the, each last state, one of the something in one's teeth. Jarvis Henry tell me the other day his brother got something in his suit on his wedding day. And he was so taken up with it that, you know, he didn't pay any attention to the ceremony and he never heard the preacher's question and neglected to say I do. The garbage man's brother leaves an expecting life. Well, yeah, first person, they get something in their shoes, their eyes glaze over, and they're oblivious to what's going on around them, even if the roof is caving in. Mm-hmm. My Aunt Florence got something in her shoes. It was the only shoes she had. She was 89 years old. And she sat barefooted on a top attack at the same time. Well, I guess her brain was deadened by what she had in her shoes and stimulated by the pack in her foot to where she was at complete dead center and she was out. Hey, hey. Hold on, there was... Roy, that you? I. What happened? I banged my head against the door. You what? I banged my head against the door. Well, how could you do that? The light's on. Maybe he had round stage in his tooth and a crack in his foot. Greetings, Mrs. Wilson. Hello, people. Well, how could you bang your head against the door? I done it on purpose. One wonders about one tiny son trying the internet. Well, I was trying out a theory of Bluetooth Johnson. Bluetooth claims if you slam your head against the door lightly, it'll hurt. But if you lunge at the half-wit door like an angry bull, you'll stun yourself to where there's no sensation. Bluetooth don't sound any too bright. Oh, up at school, Bluetooth is considered very bright. By the teachers? No, not by the teachers. By his personal friends. Different can talk about Bluetooth leading his brains to science. Bluetooth figures he's got an odd-shaped set of brains. He's banged them into so many wooden and concrete fences and junk that he thinks the gray matter in his cranium is congealed into frozen shots it is chipped off and fallen down to the base of his skull. Oh, he is. Oh, excuse me, Mom. I could ask him once he was lady's book. Huh. What were we discussing, Sage, before our dear ones stormed in? Policeman's out there. The large wants to sell you for $2.50. Oh, well, I believe I was on the point of telling you an improving little story. You had to hurt? I'm beginning to be aware of a faint feeling sensation. Well, I would have a lump. Well, wouldn't it pass me in a place? This is strange, a monstrous big high school boy supposed to have some sense to go around butting his head into doors like a billy goat. Seems like they're being other times of entertainment. Your mother's a trifle out of sorts this evening. Forgive her, won't you? I'm not out of sorts. Don't mean to be crabby, but... <laughs> Every time we get mail from them lodge fellas, it makes me mad. You're not asked to read mail from lodge headquarters. You're not supposed to read mail from lodge headquarters. 
mail from large quarters is addressed to me personally. You get the policeman's outfit, Mom mentioned? It is not a policeman's outfit. Sounds like it. Well, it is. Billy Clunk, Star, and Handcuffs. If it's not a policeman's outfit, I... old hammer toe. I didn't open up this conversation with the object in view of starting a jolly argument. Four-year-old Charlie has to up at the corner and start one of them chairs. You send away for yours, and then you and little Charlie can play robber. Can I do something for you, Sadie? No, thanks. Can I bring you a glass of water? <laughs> Maybe you'd like an orange. No. This star pictured in the catalog rush is to be worn inside your suit coat. You fit it on the lane. Just like any other large engine. All president's strangers, huh? Who's remembered? Exactly. Say, for instance, that I'm in some distant city. I'm busy. I'm not acquainted with anybody, and I'm not. I see an agreeable-looking fella, and I jerk my coat open and display my star. If he's a large brother, he smiles, fuckers his hand, and a warm friendship is the mm. Most paternal uh, emblems are worn on the lapel. The disadvantage of that is that any old slot can come up and, and claim member of brotherhood. In every organization, son, there's always a few undesirable characters. If you wear the emblem on your lapel, these undesirable characters come up and try to push themselves on it. Even try to borrow money. This way, your emblem is concealed. You only have to show it to any seller that you want to show it. I believe I'll buy one of these. <laughs> Beg pardon, Katie? I'll be Well... If a man came up to me and jerked open his coat and showed me a star, I'd think I would be an artist. Yeah, how about that? Well, now, look at here. What is it, Doug? A life-size cast iron statue of our founder, Carter J. Cox. Golly, life-size. You wouldn't keep that in the house, would you? Put it in your front yard. Oh, like over on Oakland Avenue. Oakland Avenue? Now, yeah, you've seen that big house over on Oakland Avenue. Near Merchant Street. It's got a big cast iron statue on the lawn. Alfred, don't Oh, yeah, I believe I have. But our lawn, however, is scarcely big enough for such an ordinary. Heck no. Looks funny to have a life-size statue of a guy out in front. How much do you want for that? Uh, $175. Well, that's fine, too. Maybe they got statues of B.J. Bonk in different poses. Maybe he's about a day of buckle where he's shaking hands with himself. Very, very funny. Hundred and seventy-five, Doctor. Sadie, while I'm thinking about it, the large founder's name is R. J. Conk and not B. J. Bunk. You must pronounce the name perfectly. I'd rather you wouldn't. And if that box with the billy cup star and handcuffs in it ain't a policeman's outfit, then what is it? Explain about the star and how you wear it under your coat, but you never mention the billy cup other than the handcuffs. So what are they for? Yeah, I was going to ask this. Ooh, policeman's outfit. Nothing about a policeman's outfit. Seen the same identical set down at Hamilton. Same identical set. Small ass. Fifty cents. Fifty slot dollars. One of two dollars and a half. Two dollars and a half for a child's toy. Aren't you dwelling on the subject rather a long time, Katie? Sure. Why, right, George, you take me now. Anybody walk up to me and jerk open his coat and flash a badge, I'd get the impression that I was under arrest. Let us drop the subject. Okay. Well, 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 this is interesting. This tattooed fella. Is that the fella with his shirt on and tattooing all over his back? Yeah. Very pretty. Oh, did you look through the catalog, man? Uh-huh. Seven looks familiar. F.U. you probably. Your humorous pronunciation of the name R.J. Conk makes me hold my side with hysterical laughter. May I examine the catalog, please, Joe? Here you are, must be blessed. Hi, George. He's got plenty of tattooing on his back. Hey, Sam Fleet. Residence, 2724 29th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, no wonder he looks familiar. I know Sam Fleet. He's a member of Zizzy Diana Chapter, St. Paul, Minnesota. I met Sam Fleet at a convention in Joliet in 1938. Boy, he sure is tattooed. Yes, sir. Old Sam Fleet. Listen to what all he's got printed on his back, Mom. I saw Name, Sam Fleet. Residence, 2724 29th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Age 46. Occupation, gasoline station attendant. Single. In case of accident, notify Joe Fleet, 1765 South Maple Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas. And then a bunch of Greek junk. Latin junk? Well, Latin junk, then. 
In Hoke Agricola, down, down. Oh, cut it out, Keith. You read Latin like a sick horse. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, they're catching his nag at his age. Can't you run his back? Uh-huh. Age 46. Well, he's a shame. Shame? Well, sure, so he has the first thing. The information on his back will be stale. Right, Johnny, that's so. All this information will be stale. Except his name. Look. He's got his name. Sam Fleet. Yeah. Well, that's right. Now it will be right. Residence, 27, 24, 29th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Well, he might move. Sure, he might move. You know, this is right for the wrong address, Tattoo Bar. Age 46. Next year, he'll be 47. Occupation, gasoline station attendant. You know, I'll get fired. Yeah, I'll take another job. <laughs> single. Well, uh, and when he gets married, won't his wife feel flattered? Have a husband with single tattoos on his back. In case of an accident, notify Joe, 1765 South Maple Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas.